In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good people, I'm sure you are well this day. It is Friday, the 25th day of March in the year of our Lord and Savior 2022. Gradually we are coming to the end of the month of March. And as we come uh, to the end of the month of March, that tells us one thing, that we are coming to the end of of the candidates novena, 25 days candidates novena, which is ending on the 1st of April, and we shall have the closure mass that same day. Today we are on day 19 in our 25 days. So that tells you that we have six days to go before we conclude this great novena for our candidates and our um, school going children. We are still waiting for the results, classic results. We hope and pray that maybe anytime next week, anytime next week, we can be able to have them. So we continue to thank God for the gift of that. And then on the first is the day that our, our form fours will be doing their last paper. Today I want to share with you a very short reflection taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. And it's about a gentleman called Naaman. Naaman, army commander to the king of Aram, was a man who enjoyed his master's respect and favor, since through him Yahweh had granted victory to the Arameans. But the man suffered from a virulent skin disease. Now, on one of their raids into the Israelite territory, the Arameans had carried off a little girl who, came, who became a servant of Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would approach the prophet of Samaria, he would cure him of his skin disease. Naaman went and told his master, This and this, he reported, is what the girl from Israel has said. Go by all means, said the king of Aram. I shall send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, 6,000 shekels of gold, and 10 festo robes. He presented the letter to the king of Israel. It read, With this letter, I am sending my servant Naaman to you for you to cure him of his skin disease. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes. Am I a God to give death and life? He said, For him to send a man to me and ask me to cure him of his skin disease? Listen to this and take note of it and see how he intends to pick a quarrel with me. When Elisha heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent word to the king, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me, and he will find there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his team and chariot and drew up at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent him a messenger to say, Go and bathe seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will become clean once more. But Naaman was indignant and went off saying, Here was I, thinking he would be sure to come out to me and stand there and call on the name of Yahweh his God, and wave his hand over the spot, and cure the part that was diseased. Surely, a banner, 
and Parpar, the rivers of Damascus, are better than any water in Israel. Could I not bathe in them and become clean? And he turned round and went off in a rage. But his servants approached him and said, Father, is the prophet, if the prophet asked, had you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? All the more reason then, when he says to you, bathe, and you will become clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, as Elisha had told him to do. And his flesh became clean once more, like the flesh of a little child. The word of the Lord. Every time I read from or about Naaman, I always get so inspired. And the reason why I get inspired is because quite a good number of us go to God already with a prepared script. And maybe that is why sometimes we keep praying and our prayers are not getting the desired answers. Why? Because we go to him with the desired rivers in our mind. God is talking about Jordan. We've got our parpar and the other rivers in quotes. And this is a pure story of trust and obedience. And I want to share with you five things that to me stands out. One of them, God is constantly at work to lead people to himself, no matter how dark their condition is. He's always ready. It doesn't matter how dark our conditions are. It doesn't matter how deep our lostness is. Coming Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, we will be reflecting on the prodigal son. And again, we will be reminded that it's not about the many years that we are lost. You may also note that uh, we have not been told how long the, the prodigal son got lost. That is how good our God is. However dark our conditions are, however dis desperate our cases are, however, des however hopeless our life is, God is constantly working to make things better for us. No wonder we say that we are his work in progress. Point number two. God uses any committed believer. God uses any committed believer. No matter how ordinary or insignificant he may be. And how does he do this? Because of the mighty work, the mighty God who indwells in us. This makes us significant as his instruments of light. Remember who came up with this idea? A servant girl. In the culture then, she must have been a nobody. Remember, she is a servant. So she is a slave girl. But she has a connection. Doesn't matter about who she is. That is how God works. Sometimes because of our status, we have a problem approaching God. Because we feel that maybe I'm a lowly servant. How would God maybe be able to use me? But we only need to be accessible and available. In fact, this is one of the lessons that we shall learn on Palm Sunday. That uh, just like the donkey, we also need to be accessible and also available. The rest of the things we leave to God. 
my word number three. The grace of God cannot be bought with silver or gold or power or position. We must come to God in faith and believe his revelation in the scripture. We don't buy that. So remember the position of this gentleman. Remember his wealth. None of that that God needed. He just needed him to believe his faith that it can work. There is what he was thinking, that maybe the prophet would have come, do mighty things to this mighty man. No, no. And remember he had carried some part of his wealth. That was not needed. The grace of God cannot be bought at all. My word number four. In fact, power and position, silver and gold, can be a hindrance and an impediment to coming to Christ, as well as to effective service. I don't know whether you have listened to the reasoning of Naaman. Naaman is a man of power. He is known to, to trend on the corridors of power. He is a powerful man in the military. He is a wealthy man by all means and standards. But you can see these are the things that are impeding him from accessing the healing point. And it can happen to us. I know you, you may have noted there are some people who only attend the, the services or the masses in big churches, in the cathedrals and basilicas. Because for them, God is more in the basilica God is more in the cathedral than he is in the village church. That is how weird sometimes our reasoning can be. There are also those who feel that because maybe they are mighty people, they can only be uh, ministered to by the bishops, the archbishops, the cardinals, and the rest of the big men in the church. That is where our positions, our ranks, our status impedes us from accessing the healing point. It is dangerous. Finally, two of the greatest hindrances to experiencing God's blessing for believers and unbelievers alike are what? Our pride and our opinions. Our pride and our opinions. Naaman was a proud man and he went to the healing point carrying his script. He had, apart from his pride, which was displayed all over, he had his own opinions. In fact, the Bible tells us, in mind he had his two rivers, which, the, which he wanted or where he could have been sent, but he wasn't. Dear good people, unless we work on our pride and our opinions, we may never be able to access the healing point, but God is ready. When we are ready, he is ready. And as we will hear on, on Palm Sunday, being available is not enough. Being accessible is not enough. We must be accessible and available. He wants our faith, not our silvers, not our golds, not our positions, and the like. Remain blessed, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.